Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. There is so much to talk about today. If it was possible, this video could be easily two, three hours long. First, we have to take a detailed look at our potentially damaging ice storm starting tonight all the way through Friday. This one also has a big snow potential for the mid-Atlantic region. Then we have to talk about a big signal for a very significant East Coast storm coming early next week. There are also markings in that one that point to maybe another significant ice storm in the Southeast. After that, we have to talk about the Arctic air coming down into the US from Canada and the weather pattern that that will initiate. In my opinion, we are entering a very memorable period of winter. And like I said, I could talk about these threats for three hours. There's so much data to peel through. I can't get to it all in this video, but I am doing a full super in-depth members only live stream tomorrow at 6 p.m. We're gonna go super in-depth and very detailed on every piece of data. We're gonna watch model runs as they come out. And because it's sort of like an exclusive thing, I can answer every single question that comes through the chat. So if you're not a member, become one now. There's a link in the description and there should be a join button next to the subscribe subscribe button. But now I'm going to do my best to cover everything in this video. Let's go. All right. Here's a big old view of the United States of America. And oh, buddy, literally, as soon as I pulled up this program, uh, the National Weather Service in Jackson, Kentucky, and I believe over here towards Louisville, Kentucky, they have issued ice storm warnings now for portions of Kentucky. Check this out. It's been a long time since I've seen one of these ice storm warnings for much of Eastern Kentucky into Western Kentucky. I do believe this will probably go all the way out to Paducah maybe even portions of Missouri and Arkansas will be included in this, guys. If you live in this area, this is a serious, dangerous threat. Power outages and tree damage are inevitable at this point, and also, especially around Wednesday through Thursday morning, travel will be nearly impossible. And then we've got winter weather advisories all the way back into Texas, winter storm watch down into Arkansas, and that goes all the way up into West Virginia. This will likely be expanded off to the east as well. But the headline of this storm is gonna be the ice storm here, and we can take a closer look at that on the weather models. All right, this is the North American model, and we've got the initialization of our storm forming right here in Texas and Arkansas. This is going to start off as some light rain showers and maybe a little mixed precipitation up here in northern Arkansas, but it is going to intensify and expand very quickly as our Gulf moisture meets that cold air. Watch it fan out here. Here we are, 10 a.m. tomorrow. Sleet and mixed precipitation all over Oklahoma and Texas here, and a pretty intense band of wintry precipitation forming through Arkansas, up into Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, and then a little bit of snow on top of that in Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. Now check this out. I'm going to put this a little bit further into motion. That ice really intensifies, especially in Kentucky. And we got our cold temperatures plunging down in here into Texas, keeping that precipitation frozen there north of Dallas. And look, our snow showers are also starting to intensify up here in the Ohio Valley. We've got a moderate band of snow showers that will supposedly flare up around 4 p.m. tomorrow. And as we put this into motion a little bit further, that snow slides off to the east. And look, now we're getting into where some of these areas have been seeing nonstop ice. Uh, for for almost 24 hours. Ice storms almost always are only dangerous and like impactful if they occur over a long period of time. And that's exactly what it's looking like here. As we have this boundary of air between warm air and extremely cold air up here, it's allowing for that warm Gulf air to travel aloft over the cold air. Um, and that rain's gonna freeze on impact whenever it hits the surface. And now we're going into 1 a.m. on Thursday. This is when the ice really starts to ramp up, especially in Kentucky and Arkansas here. Check this out, just east of Little Rock, a heavy band of ice. We've still got ice falling over here in Texas. It's been going on for a, a while now. And we've got a very intense band going on here in Kentucky. This is concerning. This is the area of most concern, in my opinion, for this ice storm. And then we had that moderate to heavy snow working its way into Northern Maryland and Southeastern Pennsylvania. Once again, this is 4 a.m. on Thursday, and I'm gonna push it forward and the ice just gets worse in Kentucky. And looky here, 10 a.m. Thursday. It's 10 a.m. Thursday. We're still dealing with mixed precipitation in Texas. We're still dealing with it in Arkansas. And it's heavy now. Uh, Northwestern Tennessee, Western Kentucky, very heavy ice. This could end up being a dangerous situation, guys. Make sure you're ready for the power outages and not being able to travel and all that stuff. And then let's kick it on forward. And that ice is still hanging out in Tennessee and Kentucky. Heavy snow now in Northern Virginia and the panhandle of West Virginia. That will move its way into Maryland, the DC Baltimore area, all the way down down into the Delmarva Peninsula, and it looks like Delaware, Southern Delaware, uh, will get a little bit of snow out of this, and we may finally have that completely out of our hair Friday at 4 p.m. Yes, we're talking about this starting this
this evening, and it won't be over until Friday at 4 p.m. And we definitely have the potential for this to be a damaging ice storm for many people. Let's take a look at that ice. Oh boy, here it is. This right here is the, uh, it's the one winter map I don't like to look at. This is Ice Town, baby. It has become a thing now on this channel where, you know, we all hope to be in Snowtown. We want to be in Snowtown, baby. But it looks like me, your boy, I live over here in Eastern Kentucky. It looks like I'm going to be in Ice Town. And uh, if the power goes out, I can't upload videos. So whew. let's hope this forecast is a bust. It's pretty minimal over here in Texas, even though they had such a prolonged period of ice fall. Surface temperatures are going to help with that, with uh, maybe a tenth of an inch of ice possible over here. Now, an area from Little Rock to Pine Bluff and maybe Memphis over here in Arkansas could see over a quarter inch of ice. Memphis, Tennessee to Bowling Green, Kentucky could see around a half inch of ice. Now, an area from Berea, Kentucky to Prestonsburg, Kentucky could see over three quarters of an inch of ice with isolated areas in between seeing an inch of ice or more, which would be absolutely devastating for that area. Check this out. We're zoomed in on Kentucky now. Areas of over an inch over here just east of Bowling Green, just south of Lexington, Kentucky near uh, Berea and Richmond. Uh, 1.37 inches of ice predicted on the NAM model. This is not a forecast, it's just guidance, but it's guiding me to be worried because anything over an inch is just a shutdown storm. Especially over here in Eastern Kentucky in the mountains, over an inch of ice is gonna bring down trees. It's gonna bring down power lines. It's gonna block those back roads, those haulers. This could be a crippling ice storm for a lot of communities in Eastern Kentucky if it pans out this way. There is a chance that this completely busts and this doesn't happen, but I would say prepare for the worst. Prepare tonight. All right, now let's talk about snow because that's way more fun. So north of the ice storm here, everybody's gonna get snow. And in fact, the further north you are, the more confident I am that you will get snow sticking on the, on the ground. The area real close to that freezing rain line is gonna be tight. This is what the NAM says for snow totals on our storm here. Looks like Lexington, Kentucky could see about three inches. Charleston, West Virginia, about six inches. Roanoke, about eight inches. And the DC Baltimore area, I would say uh, two to four inches. <laughs> now there is a little area of increased snow totals here on this run of the NAM for DC and it's showing over eight inches of snow, but I am not falling for it this time, Nam. No, thank you, ma'am, Nam. No, but seriously, we've seen this happen before. I really do think that the DC snow hole is going to prevail here. Um, I do think there is a possibility for you guys to see two to four inches of snow, maybe with a couple of areas real close to five inches. This little uh, little trick right here, I'm not falling for it. I hope I'm wrong. I know I've got a lot of people watching in DC that are just like, they really want to be in Snowtown, baby. I'm just thinking maybe this ain't the one. And then as you can see, there's pretty light snow amounts all the way up through here in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. And you can see those totals really starting to pile up up here in the Rockies uh, with a little bit of snow heading all the way out into Iowa of two to four inches possible all the way through South Dakota and Nebraska. This is a bunch of energy building up, waiting to fuel our next East Coast storm, which we're going to start talking about right now. Okay, here's a look at the Euro model. As I put this into motion, you'll see our first storm that we just talked about coming through. The Euro sees it almost the same way as the NAM does. In fact, I think it brings a little bit more snow to the DC area, to Northern Virginia, the panhandle of West Virginia. So the chance is there for you guys to get more snow. I'm just trying to play it conservative because I don't want to get your hopes up too much. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't want you to blame me when you're crying because it's raining outside and I told you that it was going to snow eight inches. I don't want I don't want to have that kind of uh, pressure on me, okay? But root for the Euro if you want snow over there. And then as we play this on out, there's another little system that tries to come together in the Northeast over here. This is February 14th, 4 a.m., Valentine's Day. A lot of us here in Kentucky will be having candlelit dinners, not for romance, but because the power's out. Ugh. And you guys will be dealing with some uh, flurries and some moderate snow showers. Nothing too crazy to worry about there, but check this out. As I put this further into motion, we've got something going on over here in New Mexico. What in the heck is that? We've got our polar vortex trying to plunge south with a 1047 high pressure system right here next to Nebraska. Are you kidding me? We've got the 492 line coming over into the upper peninsula of Michigan. Got that 540 line all the way down into Mexico. And check it out. It's snowing in Mexico. We've got a deepening trough happening over here. What's going to happen? Is it going to move east? Is it going to create a blockbuster storm? And yes, it does. Check this out. Heavy snow all the way down into south central Texas. This will be another shot for central Texas to see a bunch of snow. Like how, how much above average are you guys right now? Now, this is 144 hours out, so we got to take it with a grain of salt, but this has been pretty consistent for the past few runs. It looks like we will have a storm forming over here somewhere. As we put that into motion, look, that heavy snow carries over into Arkansas now, and we've got heavy ice and sleet happening in Mississippi, eastern Louisiana, and it's just kicking back the cold air all the way down to Houston. When we kick this forward a little bit more, oh man, more ice for Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, western Kentucky here with heavy snow on the backside, Paducah. You're getting a snowstorm and a half right now, according to the Euro at 1 a.m. on February 16th. 
15th. And then let's put that forward one more frame. Wow. Um, once again, a very significant ice storm going on here uh, for the Mid-Atlantic region. Very intense snowstorm happening for the Ohio Valley. Uh, this low pressure system right here on the border of North Carolina and Tennessee. This is a rare storm system, guys. Um, the, the odds of this actually panning out this way are low. It has happened before. It is a very popular uh, snow snowfall kind of system, especially for people who live over here. This is called an apps runner. A uh, low pressure system forms in the, the Gulf and then runs up the Appalachian Mountains. Doesn't happen a lot. It takes a lot of things happening in the right way for it to happen. But if it does happen, this is gonna be a very, very good storm for the Ohio Valley if you want snow. And then let's pull that forward a little bit more. The ice continues on up into the Mid-Atlantic region, into Pennsylvania. Heavy snow now in Ohio. The heavy snow moves into Western Pennsylvania and upstate New York at 7 p.m on Tuesday, February 16th. And this looks like an all rain event for the coastal areas of New England for now, but this can always change. And then we push this all the way out and it comes out of here about 7 p.m. on Wednesday. So looking at the freezing rain potential on the Euro, keep in mind, this combines both of those storms we just looked at. Our first one that we're dealing with right now, and then that second one that's more kind of over here. But still, just an absolutely insane amount of ice um, could be expected for, with, from both of these storms. Uh, but I did want to show the ice potential up here in the Mid-Atlantic region uh, because because it's serious guys a lot of us haven't went through a real true ice storm because they're so rare but when you go through one you understand why it just it sucks once again let's look at snow because that's just that's just better and look at how active we are all the way out through here this is just our two storms that we just looked at an area of over six to eight inches of snow from louisiana all the way up into the northeast much of pennsylvania upstate new york that second storm that's what you're looking at right here that's what that second storm is so this would be a very good storm for uh, some areas over here that haven't seen the snow that they should have seen so far this year. Also, much of Texas, all the way down into Southern Texas, we're looking at two to four, maybe five, six inches of snow. If this was to pan out, man, the national snow coverage would be like the most it's been in a very long time uh, with the vast majority of the whole United States with a blanket of snow over it. All right, let's take a look at that storm on the GFS, and then we'll take a look at a couple ones behind it, talking about that never-ending active pattern that we're in. And then we'll take a look at snow totals too. Here's our first ice storm. GFS doesn't see this first one nearly as intensely as the Euro or the NAM does. And the GFS sees this happening much earlier and much further north than the Euro. Check this out. Here we are on Friday, and it's already initializing over here in Texas. Pull this forward a little bit. It really becomes a, a storm in the Ohio Valley around 4 a.m. on Sunday. So yeah, this is a much uh, quicker moving storm. Uh, there's also more cold air behind it here on the GFS. The GFS is way more aggressive with the cold air, with that 480 line right here um, in Minnesota. Then here's another system that forms on the GFS, a big central U.S. system uh, that could possibly be a severe weather threat down here in the Dixie Alley. Uh, with a big snowstorm behind it uh, for Chicago and Michigan. Really brings down the cold air down into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's finally moving into the southeast here. And do we got anything else? Yes, we do. There's another storm. There's another storm. Oh, that's a big one. And then there's another storm. There's a nice looking nor'easter for you right there. Wait, 372 hours out. Oh boy, look at that total snowfall through the whole GFS run. This is not just for one storm. This is for the whole GFS run. Looking into the future, 384 hours. And boy, oh boy, is it going to get active around here guys this is like i said this is going to be a very memorable stretch of winter how would you like to see 30 more inches of snow up here in boston well over a foot for much of the ohio valley upstate new york getting a bunch of more snow this is uh this is a pretty map to look at this is very realistic we can expect a bunch of snow as we go forward gfs agrees the nam agrees all all the models agree all right one last thing let's time out that polar vortex that arctic air that's coming down from canada on the canadian model huh yeah it makes sense right okay let's put this into motion the bulk of the coldest air is going to be in here on Valentine's Day, okay? So 1 p.m. on February 14th, negative 40, negative 50 below normal th through much of the central part of the United States. Um, that's going to bring it all the way down into Texas, and it's going to spread a little bit further east now, Monday, February 15th. It never really penetrates all the way down here into far southeastern United States. Now it is going to be colder. It's going to get cold, uh, but this really intense cold is going to stay over here, and it's going to modify before it makes it to you. So we're not going to talk about intense cold down here in the southeast, but boy, uh, everywhere right and through here, yes, it is going to get ooh, super duper duper cold. All right, guys, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope I didn't go too fast for you. I had to cram as much as possible in this video. If you 
you can't become a member, then join our Discord server. I'm in there all the time, and, and I try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. So yeah, guys, I told you the active pattern was coming. We're here now. It's time to sit back and enjoy the snow, and I'll see you guys tomorrow in a regular video, and then I'll see you tomorrow again if you're a member at, at 6 p.m. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Whoop.